Oh, God. Woo. Chunky little keeper right there. Whopper plopper, low water. Let's go. Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. And today I wanna to talk about five things that you shouldn't ignore if you're fishing low water conditions. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Across the country, low water can happen for a number of reasons. Maybe you're in an area where you just haven't had a whole lot of rain for a while and you have some drought conditions and the water in your lakes and rivers and reservoirs is, is lower. It's the lake that I'm at here, I think they're getting ready to work on the dam. So they've lowered the water three or four feet. There's a a lot of different lakes that are going to lower the water going into winter as well preparing for that heavy rain in the spring there's a lot of different reasons why you may be facing low water conditions but right now i really want to talk about five things that you really shouldn't ignore when it comes to fishing low water the first thing that you shouldn't ignore is that when you have water that is receding water that is coming down you're basically going to confine the areas that the bass can be so although it can be difficult to locate bass sometimes once you find fish usually there can be a big group of fish together whether you're fishing shallow water or deep water you can actually find some really big schools while you have these low water conditions another thing that you don't want to ignore sometimes those bass are going to move from some of that shallow cover that they were in whether that's a rock or grass or wood whatever it may be and they're gonna pull off offshore this is a really big one so maybe you've been going down a bank you're inside of a creek and you're catching fish on shallow wood cover if that water happens to come down three or four feet a lot of times those fish are actually going to just pull off to the first piece of offshore structure that you have in a lot of different lakes one main piece of offshore structure that i really like to fish during low water conditions is secondary points a lot of lakes have big creek arms in them and a lot of those little pockets and creeks have good brush in them and you can catch fish in that brush a lot of times but when that water is low those fish are going to move out of some of those pockets and they're going to come to that first piece of structure which in this case is a secondary point point. and again this is where you can find some big schools of fish ganged up on these little secondary points. Now, it's not always gonna be a secondary point. If you've been catching them in a certain area, what's really best to do, look at a topographical map, try to find that first piece of structure that those fish might be relating to. So it might be a point, it might be a hump, it might be a ledge. That is where I would start when it comes to going out there and going fishing offshore. On the flip side of things, the other thing that you really shouldn't ignore is shallow Cover. It's so easy for us when we get to the lake, we see it's down two, three, four, five foot, whatever it may be, to kind of ignore that shallow cover. And maybe we just fish offshore. Now, there's always going to be a population of fish that are shallow. And so in this case, if you're taking a lot of that shallow cover out of play, a lot of that wood and rock and grass that was in the water is out of play, those fish are really going to gang up on the last piece of cover that's still in the water. I don't care where you're fishing across the United States, there's a lot of small pieces of cover, lay downs, brush that are just off the bank, stuff that we don't really see when the water is kind of at that regular level. But when that water comes down, the last piece of cover, it may be an old tree, it might be a little bit of a rock pile, whatever it may be guys, the fish can really gang up in those areas so one way to really look at this is almost like fishing a tidal water system if you've ever fished a tidal river system that water is going to fluctuate depending on where you're located in the country it may fluctuate only a foot it may fluctuate seven or eight feet you know i fished a lot on the james river and there's typically about a three four foot swing in that water and when the water starts to get low as long as it's still moving that's typically when you have the best bite when there's a lot of water up it kind of is difficult to catch fish because the fish have so many places to get into. When that water's down, you only have so much wood and so much cover that's in the water and that's where you're going to get bit. And not only that, like I talked about earlier, you might catch five, six, seven fish off the same piece of cover. It may be a lay down tree and all those fish that were in different trees all go to that one tree because it still has enough depth for them to live. 
always, always, there's literally always a plane. Why? The fourth thing that you really don't want to ignore when you're fishing low water conditions are creek channels, ditches, and drains. These are areas that bass are going to relate to heavily as that water is dropping. These fish already know where these pieces of structure are. These creek channels, these drains, these ditches, they already know where this stuff is. And so if that water is falling, bass are typically going to relate to those creek channels and those ditches, especially if those creek channels and ditches have a little bit of cover really close by. Maybe you have a, a, a stump that's right on the lip of a little bit of a ditch. If that water starts to lower, that fish is gonna suck right to that stump. So it's really easy to look at a topographical map and find creek channels. Fishing those creek channel banks with crankbaits and jigs is a great option when that water is low. Now, a little bit of a sneaky area to fish when that water is low is what is called a drain. Basically what a drain is, is kind of where you have two points that come together. Typically in a lot of lakes and a lot of river systems, what happens in that drain is you have a lot of wood that collects and it'll collect from the shoreline all the way out really deep. So like we talked about earlier with those fish relating to the last piece of cover that's still in the water, if you find these drains, literally as the water continues to fall and continues to fall, those fish are simply going to move down and just continue to be in that wood cover that's in those drains. Another place that you really want to key on during low water conditions are vertical cover and structure. And the biggest thing that I can think about is bluffs. Typically a bluff is going to be pretty vertical, right? It's going to be pretty straight up and down, if not very, very steep. If a fish is on a flat that's three foot deep and it extends for a hundred yards and that water drops four feet, that fish has to travel a hundred yards to get to where it can still be in the water. But if a fish is living on a bluff, that fish just has to move four feet, right? It just has to go down with the water. It's going to still be very comfortable there because you have deep water close by. So focusing on vertical structures, ditches, drains, and creek channels is huge when you have low water conditions. All right, guys, the fifth thing that you absolutely do not want to ignore when you have low water conditions is realizing that you have a great opportunity right now to take pictures of different cover and structure so that when that water comes back up, you can be very effective out there on the water. I don't care if the water has dropped three foot, two foot, 20 foot. If you aren't going out there and trying to catch fish, at least go out there and take pictures of a lot of the areas that you may already fish. You might find that there are certain little creek channels or little rock piles or little stumps that you had no clue even existed there. Always have your phone close by. You can take pictures. You can put GPS coordinates in so that when that water comes back up, maybe it comes back up in the spring, you're going to have little sections, little areas that may only be 50, 60 foot long that other people completely ignore, but you know exactly why bass are there. Maybe it's a little ditch that you would have never thought existed when the water was high, but because that water's low, you see it, you can take a picture of it, and you can take advantage of that situation. That's a huge tip that can really help you to catch fish in the future. So low water is definitely something that you can face a lot out there on the water. I love talking about situations that we face as anglers out on the water. Another big one is rain. If you guys want to watch a video on what to do before, during, and after the rain, you can click this link right here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.